Uh, today I'm going to make a video on how to do some uh, wind play. It's going to be kind of start off kind of intermediate and then work more towards advanced. So let me find some holes. Since we're currently in uh, six star hotel tournament, let's go ahead and go to six star hotel and we'll do more of the easier wins it's uh it's gonna be like one one to five in this tour tour four and um, it's also gonna be from the shorter tees so let's see if i can get an opponent here i can just go over some basics here on how to play the wind in this game because one of the things that I've noticed is the more wind that you get the more you have to play it and it it's not necessarily a linear relationship where let's say for example you'd have a two mile per hour wind and it's going to go half as much as a four mile per hour wind now, granted, it's pretty close, and it's close enough that when we're talking twos and fours, that it's going to be very similar. The biggest difference that I've been noticing is maybe the difference between a six and a 12. And that's not necessarily twice as much wind, because it seems to, the longer the ball's in the air, seems to really be affected by those winds, and it'll push maybe just a little bit more than just twice as much maybe it would be 2.3 times as much for example but if you stick to a close linear relationship in the model you're going to be all in all pretty close on your wind play so one of the things I do with this drive let me hit this quasar ball I'm just going to do short tees I'm not going to do top spin because I already have pretty good length I'm going to use the the right side of my bullseye where you see the white as my as my target zone so instead of hitting in the center bullseye I'm going to play just enough outside that that wind isn't going to play too much that I'm going to be completely screwed here and I'm going to just hit the ball into the white So one of the things that allows me to do is get some extra curl. It doesn't bring that top left side up into play when you overhook it. If, if you can play an overhook, it's going to create that extra side spin that you want. It really keeps you out of trouble. So for the rest of these shots, I'm just going to play, I'll just play it on bullseye. And maybe I'll try to miss the green just so I can give you guys some, uh, a little pitching guideline too, while we're at it here. Another thing I can do is, I get, uh, hopefully if I get a good camera view, I can kind of see what this guy's doing as well. So... Okay, so right now I'm right on the tip of where that rough is. So that wind is going to be strong enough to push me in the fairway as long as I don't add extra power. So what I'm going to try to do, I'm going to just try to hit it real close to that just to kind of show you what, what wind, how wind is going to affect it. So I'm right barely in the rough here. And it's pushing one straight to the side. If I catch a perfect ball, which I did, there's no reason that should hit the right. And you can see kind of where where I missed by. It was it, it looked like it might have been maybe two yards left of that rough. So you can see the the wind took that ball entirely because I didn't do anything curl anything like that. I just hit a basic just straight ball 
and the wind just took that over back into the fairway. So one of the things that's challenging about wind play is figuring out how much that five is going to play. Because the closer you get, so with the end bringer, it looks like he's more towards the end of his end bringer. So it's more towards at least two thirds, maybe three quarters of the, as far as that club will go. And the farther that club goes, the more the wind is going to go with it. So let's just say for hypothetical, I was right off the green here. Well, if it was a five wind, I wouldn't even really, I wouldn't even factor in the wind. If I was, if I was close enough that I was just right off the edge, I wouldn't even factor it in. Now, the time that I might factor it in is I'd have to be far enough. Let's say I was where that guy was. I probably would have played it outside the cup at least at least by a few cups. Like the, the, the diameter of the cup, I would just kind of visualize moving left and right. And I would probably do two or three at least outside that edge. And I'd add a little bit of power too. Well, not power, but uh, I'd push my arrow up to kind of counter that wind. Generally, I try to play my wind to where I don't have to hit anything more than a 100% ball. So anything beyond 100% seems it, it, it's more of a guess. Now, granted, I think wind play in, in general is a, a guess anyway. But I prefer to just be able to hit that 100% shot every time, which is basically what I consider right in the center of that golf ball that they give you, as opposed to trying to add power and trying to figure out how much power you're adding. It's a riskier move to me. Now, granted, if you always play like that and you get kind of an understanding of how much that's actually adding on each of your clubs, you surely can play that way. But you would really have to take the time to just do that with all your clubs, figure out how much extra that ball's going. And the easiest way to figuring out how much stuff is adding is by playing small winds like this. The smaller the wind, the easier to develop a method for you to use on those later higher winds. So one of the things I like to do in this hole is pretty much exactly what that guy just did. Which is kind of go this way. And if you can get... So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to use this as my target line. So I'll pull this up to the full club here. And then as you can see, it's kind of pointing straight. So if I'm right in the middle of that fairway, it's really going to increase the odds that I'm going to be able to pull this off and catch a perfect ball and all those factors still stay pretty good. It looks like I might have just babied it. I needed to add just a little bit of power, but as you can see, it was kind of going right towards that hole. It's a perfectly safe way to play this hole as opposed to playing that rough shot that so many people try to do. The rough shot just seems to bounce pretty inconsistent, so I try to stay away from it. Now, one of the things that you do, if, if you hit it at the same spot off that rough there every single time, it's going to be pretty consistent. It's when you miss your line by a yard or two that it seems to be you'll get inconsistent hops. So that's why I try to stay away from that. Okay, so now we did more of just kind of like a basic intro there. I want to... Let's do, let me see if I can grab one more hole, actually. That'll give us another set of wins here. Maybe we can get something that's a little bit different, different shots. Alrighty, so we got straight in the wind here. So one of the things that I want to use just as a guide to show you, since there's a lot of lines here, so if I was to put this right here, you can see when I pull up, you can see where my full ball is going to go. You see that? 
that shows you where full ball will go. Now, that three mile per hour wind, I'm not even going to be able to get that up on the rocks. Like, it's, it's just going to hit straight water if I go for that shot. That's how much that three right there will play. So, if I was to go over this way, I would do, I wouldn't really have to add too much power, so I'm not going to. I'm not going to really add power or anything, do anything fancy. I'm just going to hit this shot and just curl it into that safe spot of this fairway over here. Stay away from the bunker, stay away from the rough, stay away from everything. Kind of leaves you a nice little pitch. And if you play it here every time, you'll get better at this spot every time. And you'll kind of know more or less how much wind you want to play. So, in terms of, like, counting how much you should be going, I don't really have a set method that I use. Um, it'd be nice to know exactly how big that bullseye is. Like, if they had, if they had tick marks on it or something, to where you could see, oh, well, this is one yard over, this is two yards over, but it's based on accuracy it's based on your accuracy so it's always going to be a percentage shot but it'd still be nice for those to have those if they had those on there then i'd develop a system but the system is a little bit too complicated to try to figure out on your own without a little bit of help but one of the things i'll do if i'm playing wins is i'll really i'll rotate this until i can point it straight and then i'll try to play it just pull it straight up and then I'll figure out, well, does this look like about where a five would be? And uh, it looks like I might have overplayed it, so I might just, since I don't have enough time to correct it, I'll try to curl it just a tiny to get it coming back towards the hole at least. But I rushed that a little bit, and it was coming in a little bit too hot. So one of the things that I'll do when I'm lining those up is I'll do one or two backspin on my and then get that third bounce to be maybe just a few yards in front of the hole and I and I know it'll just run out just like three or four yards so if I can play it like three yards in front of the hole it's about perfect so this guy has a seven it looks like he's doing pretty good win play if you can kind of see what he's doing the only thing that he's doing differently than me is he's doing a uh, backspin shot and of course he just hit a minor shank there so it's going to keep it out to the left it's going to keep it out to the right instead of going back towards the hole now the shot that he just played was going to be hard to pull off anyway because he's trying to backspin it up that hill and keep it online which is kind of a, a tall task if i was going to Usually if I play a backspin shot like that, it would be down a hill, not up a hill. Because down a hill, you need to keep it out there left enough that it'll just, when it's coming back, funnel down the hill. So you have to play it a little bit more than you would typically think. Play the wind a little bit extra, so that way you, like if I was coming in from the other way, left to right, I'd be still up on the left side. My ball would land on the left side of the hill and it would roll, trickle down it, down towards the hole. This one, he had to get at least right behind there. And then it's just gonna kinda come straight back. And again, if you're gonna hit it straight behind the hole, well, you might hit the pin on the way through. So that's one of the reasons that I definitely don't like to try to bring that shot in. It just makes it a little bit more challenging in my opinion, to pull off. So it looks like he's gonna go for this just over the bunker. So kind of watch what he does here. He has it pointed in the bunker. He's probably gonna pull it back just a tiny bit and he's probably just gonna let it go just to be on the safe side so he doesn't hit that bunker. So where he's aiming, he has his third in the middle of the bunker. He doesn't really have to add power, but he it, it, yeah, he's pretty steady here. This this will be perfectly safe. The only thing is it's going to be deep. And that's the only reason I tend to... Well, actually... Wow. 
So that was actually, that was pretty good side, side shot. I'm surprised that the wind didn't play a little bit more there, but he was towards the back end of his, uh, the short end of his club, which, which really tries to intensify the wind. It'll make it underplay some when you, when you try to do, when you, when you're on the short end, like, uh, like when I go up to my cataclysm, that's the shortest that wind will ever play. It'll barely, the wind will barely even play as opposed to what what's going to play for me here on the long end of this club. So the long end of my tsunami is going to play a lot. So you kind of see how far right I went. I added just a little bit of curl back towards the hole just to keep it kind of one line there. So you see that was like a counter attack. So what, what happens when you play a side wind like that, when you play a, a, a side wind like that, it's gonna want to keep bouncing left as it lands. So what I did with that little slight curl back was to try to keep it going straight once it bounces. You don't have to do that. You can just do a little bit extra wind play depending on the shot. For, for instance, if I had that on, the Milano course for this tour, the one with the, the circular fairway that you have to hit. If I had a side wind like that, I would need some kind of counter for it or else I wouldn't be able to get it back online. If I just let it go and it hit that little speck of fairway and hopped over the green, it wouldn't be online unless I countered it with something. So I would need either a side spin ball or I would need to curl it some just to keep it going back online. That's kind of like a tactic to keep it going straight as opposed to curling off to the edge. So one of the things that I'm gonna try now is to just, I think I did tour nine this time. I'm pretty sure, but the wind seems relatively similar here. It's only like a six or a seven. And it's about a six wind on this hole. See, so he has a 15% reduction ball so we're right at about a six six point one magnitude wind here so that guy really kind of hit uh, a nice curl around there that this is a really tough target zone to hit now, the wind being so short kind of helps like it's kind of straight in the face so it's really kind of a favorable wind I'm going to try to get more towards the end of this fairway. Um, one of the ways that I'm going to have to do that, though, which makes it easier on my life, is I'll do it with full power shot. And I might do it with some curls. So I'll play it off that left. I'll play it off that left of my bullseye in the white. So as you can kind of see where I'm aiming, I'm trying to get it to if it lands in that point and it goes straight sideways I'll still be okay so right off the left it's coming in let's see if I can get it to shoot right down this meadow and I got it so that just kind of gives you just kind of like an advanced aiming technique too to where you can try to use your bullseye to your advantage, not necessarily hit a perfect shot, but put it into the white to, to give you that little bit of extra curl. Plus you have to also be factoring in that wind while doing it. Cause you gotta think, well, that ball's gonna go only whatever five in the face of my bullseye is. So it's not gonna reach the back end of that. It's not going to reach where I'm actually pulling it up to. It's going to land shorter. So you got to keep that in mind. So one of the tendencies there would be to miss right and maybe not realize that it's not going to go that far. So you kind of got to overplay it a little bit. Okay, so now 13 in the face. This is or 13 downwind. This is kind of a challenging wind. So, okay, so if I do three, I need it to bounce right in front of that hole. So one of the things I'll do is I'll pull it 
and I'll figure out it looks like I'm right at the end of my club so this is going to be maximum wind play so this is going to be more towards the long end of how that how much wind this is going to play I'm going to turn it up just to make sure that it's kind of pointing towards the way that I want ah I didn't get the perfect ball I have a feeling this one's going to probably want to creep over there eh, it was it was pretty online there so I might have been I might have been overplaying that a little well I was obviously overplaying it a little bit because you can see that it didn't get to the hole so which means that I was pulling it back too far and when I do that rotate to the side I'm kind of trying to gauge is it going to still land where I originally put it so I originally had it if you go back you can see that I originally had it right in the center of the hole right short it was probably maybe two yards short, maybe a yard right in front of that pin. And then I started trying to play my wind. Well, one of the things I'll do if I'm if I'm just guessing it free freehand like that, and I'm just pulling it back into the left tiny bit, I'll rotate it and point the arrow straight up, and I'll see is that in plane with where I originally had it. And if it is, then sometimes I'll just go with it. It doesn't mean it's right. But it means that you're at least pulling it in the direction that you're supposed to be. And you're just playing the magnitude wrong. You're either underplaying it or overplaying it. One or the other. So this is kind of, this shot right here, especially straight to the side, it's kind of like a three, three backspin fairway bounce. One of the things that I figured out on this hole is over here in the fringe is about an eight. So if you get this kind of right around there, one of the things, I'll point it to the side, see, am I in the rough? It looks like I'm right towards the end of that fairway. So I might just go with this right here. Ah, I did not want to shank that. And I didn't try to counter it, so it's really gonna miss left here. That's really a pretty big, pretty big pull. So had I not been rushing, I would have tried to get a perfect ball there. And I, I forgot to counter it. I would, have, I would have just countered that just a tiny bit as well. And that's kind of the way that I like to play that shot. But that great ball really, if you hit a great ball like that on a side wind, it greatly affects. You, you really start to overhook. And especially, uh, same, same vice versa. If you shank it the other way, it really tries to resist that hook. So you'll end up missing by a significant amount, kind of an annoying amount. And it can be frustrating to try to get this. Let, let me see what this guy is. So he bounced it way shorter. You, you, if you do that, you have to take off a lot of backspin, which usually makes it run through. Uh, you kind of want to kind of avoid landing it that far back on that fairway, it's gonna be hard to get a good shot out of where he bounced it. You, you wanna take it more towards the end where I had it, right towards the tip. And if you can rotate your screen and figure out if it's pointed right towards the end of that fairway, just visualize a straight line going, when I, when I, turn, when I rotated that screen, try to visualize a straight line that would just extend that arrow. Is it in the rough? If it's not, you're good. You can play that side wind. Now it gets a little bit harder. It gets a little harder when, when it starts pointing more down or into the face. It's a little bit harder to do, but you can use the same kind of techniques to kind of figure out if you're doing more or less what you want to be doing or not. So this hole, uh, I don't like when I get straight in the face here. So w what I'll try to do on a win like this is I'll just pop it straight over this bunker. I'll, I'll get it to where it's pointed towards the right of that fairway, you see? It's, it's going right up that left side, right towards the right. And then here, I can tell if when I pull this up, it's in the bunker, but that five wind is going to take precedent over that that is nothing so if I go full here it's it's, it's gonna be fine it's gonna land well before that you can see I still had I still had at least five yards to spare there 
And you see I hit it right up this right side here. Right where I was aiming. This is right where I want uh, it. It's not a very good shot from here. Um, but it's the best from that fairway is what I've noticed. Is from the fairway that I'm on specifically. It's, it's, it's as good as you'll get. Uh, sometimes I'll try to, if at all possible, I'll just I'll just go for as close as possible. If I can get closer, it, it's going to raise the percentage chances that I can put it in the hole, as opposed to going at it from back where I am. It's kind of a really challenging shot anywhere on this fairway. I'd rather be in the rough or in the bunker up towards the green, if at all possible. It really gives, even if you don't get a perfect and you just get a great ball. Well, maybe you underplayed the wind, maybe you overplayed it, and you can still give it a good run. If I pull this straight up and down, you can see it hopping all, look at that, that is just sick. Like, I don't want anything to do with that fairway there because it's never going to respond how I want it. So maybe I'll try a backdoor shot here. You see when I pull this straight up and down, it's at least doing somewhat of what I want. Now the back door shot here I really don't recommend. It's it's not it's not a very good shot. But I'm gonna use that as my target and then I'm just gonna over curl it. Just to kind of get a give this ball a chance to go in. I don't think it's gonna go in, but at least I'm giving it a chance to come back down the hill. It looks like I just overplayed that curl a little bit. It doesn't like coming back down off that hill, so it's nothing that I really recommend doing. But as you could see, there was kind of no way that I was going to be able to to get that shot anyway. There was there was really if I would have went straight, you saw it had like 27 different bounces when I pointed it straight at the hole. Like, well, what do you do in that scenario? The biggest reason that I would even go over there is because it gives you it gives you plenty of green to work with this guy's a little short-sighted yeah you can even see he's aiming in the rough just to play his wind here which is fine I mean it, it, it's not a problem where he was at but I just I guess prefer giving myself a little more green to work with. Plus, I like trying to be able to use that left slope. If I would have had a nice side spin ball, I would have definitely tried to bring it in right, left to right, which I ended up bringing it in left to right anyway. I like using that green and try to try to get the ball to counter down that hill. Not necessarily with backdoor, but even with kind of maybe like two or three top spin there or uh, backspin I mean to where it would still run out just a couple yards like two or three yards and then do like a front door still try to come in the front of the cup but I went with the back door shot there Ugh. there was no real good way to approach that in fact that and that's why you're seeing kind of the the tournament store scores here all over the place is because there's not really a lot to make on this course. That, like the, this par three is kind of easier to make than some of the other stuff. So this guy drew a pretty good wind. It's pretty straight down. You want to hit towards the front of the fairway. And wanting to hit towards the front of the fairway, you can see a lot of guys over playing the wind because they have to get that front of the fairway. He pulled it off perfectly. That's about, and, and look how much it still ran out. Like that downwind there really, really forces your hand if you're gonna go for that shot. So let me see what wind I got. I got straight sideways. Um, I can go for this shot. I tend to go for this rough shot, especially on a wind like that because it's pointed towards a hole, but so I can hit this counter shot. Why don't I just, uh, I'll just go for this shot. I don't usually do this, but I'll do it. So I need to keep it towards that front of that fairway. So you'll see my arrow is pointing straight up, right towards the front. The next hardest part is figuring out, well, did I underplay it? Did I overplay it? 
and we'll see. So it's kind of going straight at it, hit the front of the fairway, see if I can get it to stop. And there it is. And you see that counter wind that I put on it? If you go back and you, you look at my backspin, I put that left spin. Did you see how that got it going almost straight on line? I had, what, two and a half, three bars of left spin there? That was a really good tutorial there to see how much that two, three bars kept that on plane. Because that barely missed left. I mean, it was an overplay by maybe half a bar of spin. Not very much. So, I, again, I just try to keep that in mind when going through your wins. And hopefully this video was helpful to you and your scores will get better.